925. This is the latest the staff have arrived in living memory. We're all catching Peacock. Last night's blizzard was the worst in living memory. I reckon we'll be lucky to see them at all. I'm surprised you're here, Mr. Spooner. I would have thought you would have taken advantage of the inclement weather to take the day off. Oh, not me, sir. I slept in the all-night cinema down the road. I can't afford to miss payday, especially today when we get our rise. Oh, so we've been led to believe. 9.28. I shall have to report this to Mr. Rumbold and see if we can borrow some temporary staff from other departments. Oh, they'll be here, sir. Uh, when they heard the weather forecast yesterday, I heard them making contingency plans. What had they in mind? Well, for a start, they were all going to stay at Mrs. Slocum's house because she lives the nearest. But she lives at the end of a cul-de-sac backing onto a common. They'll never get across the footpath to get to the bus stop. As they're all hard up, I reckon they'll make every effort. <sighs> 9, 29 and 45 seconds. At 9.30, I shall assume they're not going to arrive and act accordingly. Five seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one, not... <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry we're late, but we lost our transport. What did you have? A snow plow? I had six Yorkshire Terriers at the end of the <laughs> When we left the backyard door. After we cleared the path with a shuffle. Oh, I shouted, mush, mush, and nothing happened. <laughs> but then they spotted my pussy and took off like that. <laughs> I hung on till the end of the high street, but they slipped their collars and they were off. <laughs> By that time, we're going flat out down the hill. And we went straight through a red traffic light at some roadworks. That was very dangerous. Did anyone see you? Yeah. It was very useful for overtaking. They moved to one side every time I flashed. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Hi ho! Hi ho! And the failure of management to meet the promised 10% pay demand is most unfortunate. But I understand the company's difficult position. I'm confident that my department will continue to put their shoulders to the wheel with their usual enthusiasm. Um, copies to Mr. Grace, accounts, uh, file, etc. It's ever so cold in here. You should have worn a warmer dress. That's all I have, sir. Well, I'll put the blow heater on under my desk for a moment. Enter! Now, let's see if I can find the right button. See very well under the desk. Uh, you understand where I am? <laughs> You've just made a happy man feel very old. <laughs> oh, uh, your morning cup, sir. Ah. Sorry about the dry milk, it's all part of the economy plan. Oh, and there's the hot water. Well, where's the tea? You have to supply your own. <laughs> the governor's cutting costs to the bone. We can't drink hot, dried milk. Well, if you don't tell anyone and you want a tea bag, I do have a supply. Ha <laughs> ha, I knew I could rely on you. Yes. Extra tea, five pence. <laughs> well worth it. Thank you very much indeed. One or two? Oh, two, please. I like it strong. Thank you. One. <laughs> two. Is that it? Well, you're lucky you get the first go. That's going to do the lift girls and half the accounts department. <laughs> Why only half the accounts department? The other half like coffee. <laughs> Have a nice tea. <laughs> While Captain Peacock's off the floor, could you lend me 50 pence till my wages come? I want to send out for a coffee. Oh, I'm sorry, love, but look at that. See, not one coin. I'm flat broke. I've never been flat broke in my life before. Me and all. That rice is coming right at the right time. You can say that again. You know, I always keep a couple of pound notes tucked away in my knickers, just for emergencies. <laughs> Unfortunately, last week, I had an emergency. Oh, what happened? 
the elastic broke. <laughs> and I dropped one in the haymarket. <laughs> and it blew off down the street. <laughs> Two seconds later, the other one followed it. Mr. Humphreys, get back behind your counter. Captain Peacock, I normally would obey every command you give me, but let's face it, as far as customers are concerned, they could be in the North Pole. I'm just waiting here for my wages so I can send for a coffee to thaw me out. Just feel that. Oh, your tiny hand is frozen. <laughs> I said get back. Now, if you'd spoken like that before... Yes? I'd have gone straight away. <laughs> You want the good news or the bad news first? What do you mean? Well, the good news is here's your pay packets. The bad news is we ain't got no rise. What was that? No rise. And I can tell you now, I thought you can rub us down in packing. Toiletries are having a sit-in. <laughs> well, I've been held down for over a year. I think we should go and complain to Mr. Gray's personally. Well, let me tell you, that man is approachable, because I've just approached him in his office. Look at my attire, I said. Look at the frayed cuffs on the end of my shirt. And did he look? Yeah, I shoved it right under his nose, like that. And I said, look, the left sole of my shoe is partly company with the upper. And bang, I shoved it right on his desk. But did he look? Long and hard. And then he took out of his pocket a great thick wad of fibres done up in an elastic band. Removing the elastic band, he put the situation to right there and then. What did you get? The elastic band to keep my soul on. <laughs> well, after that, what chores have we got? After that, nothing. I can't give my mother any less. She's taking him washing as it is. I didn't know that. Neither did I, till I caught her down by the canal with a big boulder and a packet of bowls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that settles it. I'm not standing for this, and I am unanimous in that. <laughs> say that we go to Mr. Rumbold and demand our rise. Mr. Grace must be off his rocker if he thinks he's going to get away with this. Well, for once I'm on your side. Do you know, I'd get more if I was an old age pensioner. Well, you haven't got long to wait. <laughs> now, I've got my dander up, so just watch it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I suggest that you hang on, grit your teeth and tighten your belts. Uh, just rushing in and demanding your rise will achieve nothing. I'm glad to hear you say that, Captain Peacock. Because <coughs> you ain't got one either. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm middle management. My rise has been agreed at the table in the boardroom. Well, according to Mr. Patel of accounts, middle management are going to be asked to take a cut. What? what? <laughs> this is monstrous. You sure? Mr. Patel was middle management till he heard the news. The last time I saw him, he was going upstairs to hand in his notice and catching his curry vouchers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that settles it. We must be united in this. All for one and one for all. Right, so who's going in first? Well, I suggest we all go in together. Well, the doorway isn't big enough. Well, we could all bunch up tightly behind Captain Peacock. <laughs> no, uh, we could go in side by side. Except Mrs. Slocum. I shall be pleased to lead the way, and that daft boy can bring up the rear. Mr. Grace is off his rocker if he thinks he's going to diddle us. Yeah, but what are you going to say? I shall be succinct and to the point. <laughs> That's all very well. But what are you going to say? Give us the money, joggy, as or else. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Wooden. What? You've lost a monkey? <laughs> Good Lord. Bid you where? <laughs> that must have been painful. <laughs> Make a note of this. What sort of monkey? Paraguayan? What do they look like? Long arms, bald head, and big ears. <laughs> That sounds hideous. <laughs> Have you got all that down? I think I can remember it. I'll, I'll note the department. That was very careless of them. Mr. Rumble. Shush, shush. I'm on to Mr. Grace's office. Yes, sir. I, I, uh, I heard the uh, bad news about a moment ago. Don't say something's happened to Mr. Grace. It seems when they tried to restrain him, he bit Mr. Wooten on the nose. <laughs> you said he'd gone off his rocker. 
he's, he's probably hiding in the lift shaft. <laughs> have, you, have you tried dangling a banana down there? <laughs> See if that would tempt him. This would not seem to be an opportune moment to talk about our rise. <laughs> uh, right, I'll tell the rest of the staff. Yes. Yes, Mr. Grace. Who was that Mr. Grace on the phone? Well, I'd hardly be calling anybody else Mr. Grace. You said he was hiding down the lift shaft. No, no, no. That was a bald-headed Paraguayan monkey that's just escaped from the pet department. I presume you came in to tell me you've just heard the same news. But there's no need to panic. Just get back to your counters and keep your eyes open. We didn't come in here to discuss a monkey. We've come about our pay rise. What we ain't got. Mm, and what we ain't happy about. <laughs> well, we're living in very difficult times. Mine was agreed and ratified. And we, and I speak for everyone here, are not leaving this office until we get your assurance that during this day, that rise will be forthcoming. I was expecting the increase, too. I'm just as disappointed as you are, but what can I do? Nothing, because you haven't got the guts. Look, the general economy's on the up. I feel sure that in the course of time, the pay rise will be forthcoming. The course of time has run out, as far as I'm concerned. Me, too. I'd be better off if I was fired. At least I'd get severance pay, and then I could go straight away on the dole and be out looking for another job. <laughs> no reason to fire anyone. Yeah, he wouldn't get anyone to work here for our wages. That's why he can't fire us. So, all you need is a reason. Naturally, I can't just say to Mr Grace that I've fired all my staff. That would have put my credibility at risk, not to mention my job in jeopardy. I must have a reason. Well, we'll give you a reason. I take it this is on behalf of all of us? Agreed. <laughs> That was very naughty, Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> and let it not be said that I haven't got a sense of humour. <laughs> now get back to your counters. I've got work to do. Well, you're the only one. Come on. Well, open the door, you daft boy. <laughs> <laughs> do you think they mean it? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Due to our cash flow problem, we can't even afford the severance pay. Uh, uh, Mr. Grace, Rombo's here. Bad news, I'm afraid, sir. Yes, the staff are trying to get themselves fired. Uh, what's that? You've got even worse news. It's a Japanese takeover bid. <laughs> what would that mean, sir? I see. We'd all get fired. That's it. We do no more work, and then they'll get the message, and they'll have to fire us. And we can nip out quick and get on the dole immediately. I must say, withdrawal of labour would bring the point home to them. You mean like a sit-down strike? They don't fire people for striking, they just don't pay them. But we'd be no better off then than what we are now. She's right. No, we must do something that they can't forgive us for. Well, I've often done that, but I've always been forgiven. <laughs> Mind you, it was always by the same vicar. <laughs> yeah, but that Mrs Comlosi, she got fired from cosmetics for being rude to a customer. Well, now's your chance. Oh. Yes, now then, you go on and be first to get fired. No, you're senior. We're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. Now get over there. Oh, <laughs> I've just come over to tell you I ain't serving you. Oh, I don't expect you to. You're obviously a junior. I need a senior salesperson, as I wish to purchase a fur coat for my sec uh, uh, second cousin. Uh, something in the region of £5,000 or more. Uh, yeah, just hang on a minute, will you? <laughs> Did you hear that? They want to spend over five grand. What are we going to do? Stand firm. You're not on commission. Oh, what a dilemma. What happened to all for one and one for all? Oh, we can share it. No, no, we've agreed and we'll stick to it. I will go over there and be the first to sacrifice myself as an example to the rest of you. It's Joan of Arc all over again. <laughs> the one slight difference. Joan of Arc had Callie printed across her heart. And what do you think Mrs Slocum will go with? Callie written across her knickers. <laughs> I am Mrs Slocum, 
senior salesperson on the ladies' count. Ah, good. I'd like a fur coat, something in the region of £5,000 or more. What do you suggest? I suggest that you buy a gun, fly a plane to Canada, climb up a tree and wait. <laughs> I don't quite understand you. Well, to put it another way, get stopped. <laughs> Now, I expect you want to get me fired. The manager's office is over there. Kick up as much stink as you like. Oh, yes, yes, you might like to ring the papers. The papers? I can't be in the papers with, uh... Percival, Miss Percival. I know your name, you idiot. So does my wife. Come on. Let's get out of here. Oh, stinks. <laughs> Not going to be easy. We'll burn the place down. That will do it. We want to get fired, not jailed. Well, I did my best. Oh, I can't bear the thought of us all going one by one. Tell you what, why don't we go up to the lift, wait till the doors open and all be rude together? That should do it. Hands up those in favour. What are we going to say? Uh, buzz off, you ugly git. <laughs> yeah, but supposing they're foreign, they might not understand. Oh, we, we need an international gesture. What about a loud raspberry? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Something more telling. What about the old two-fingered salute? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Universal and unmistakably an instant. Right, come on, let's get to it. <laughs> I can hear them coming. Are we ready? Well, throw in a raspberry just for good measure. <laughs> I am ready. <laughs> now, raspberries and fingers ready. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in the absence of anyone to be rude to, I'm going over to the pub for an unspecified number of gin and tonics. I think I'll join you. Me too. I'm always more outspoken after two or three pints of Guinness. <laughs> I thought you'd have been more everything. <laughs> I've got bad news for all of us. The Japs have invaded. <laughs> what are you talking about? I was here, Wigan, at a shareholders meeting, and they voted to sell us to the Japs. We're all going to get booted out. They can't do that to us. We're British workers. It's a fight accomplished. We haven't even been consulted. Do yeah, we have our rights? I, uh, I've got bad news, I'm afraid. We've just heard. Ah, well, I'm not taking this line down. I think we should fight this takeover. For once, I'm in agreement. Ten minutes ago, we were all trying to get fired. Mm. <laughs> yes, but not by the Japanese. Oh, it ain't definitely definite. They're sending their head man, Mr. Yomoto, to have a quick go over the building and make sure they can modernise it to make it pay. I expect your job will be taken over by a robot, <laughs> breaking off once a week to have a quick plate of microchips in the canteen. <laughs> Where is this, Mr. Yomoto? At runway four, he throw. The doors of his executive jet is all frozen up. Once they get a blow lamp, you'll be here. Do you think you'll keep any of us on? Oh, I don't think I could live off a bowl of rice a day. <laughs> My eyes are small enough as it is. <laughs> One feels so helpless. I fear that we at Grace Brothers are about to become a statistic. Well, the Prime Minister said the medicine would be bitter, and she was right. That's it. That is it. You've got it. Other people have done it. Why can't we? I bet they even do it in Japan. Well, can we Harry carry? <laughs> <laughs> No, we'll go to number 10 and put our case on the table. She's a woman, she'll understand. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mind you, what we need is a spokesman or spokeswoman. The question is, who? <coughs> My workers are solidly behind me and I'll be happy to go to number 10 and put our motion on the table. What we need is shorter working hours, a guaranteed index-linked pay rise, early retirement, a better canteen dinners. Now, in exchange for our demands being met in toto, I am prepared to form a workers' cooperative elected by a semi-secret ballot. And I ask you, brothers and sisters, to vote for me, and I will bring home the bacon. Give me the tools, I'll do the job! <laughs> <coughs> yes. Um... <laughs> Hands up those who vote for Mr. Harmon. 
Have you any more to say? Yes, I have. <laughs> Anyone got an elastic band? This one's broke. <laughs> no, what we need is someone with charm and charisma. Someone who's not too far one way or the other. <laughs> Very kind of you. <laughs> I don't think I'm forceful enough. Well, dear, I, I didn't actually mean you. Well, who else isn't too far one way or the other? <laughs> I mean his views. I had in mind Captain Peacock. Captain Peacock? Well, I, I'm thinking about the firm, you see, and in that Anthony Eden hat, he does look the part, and he can charm when he wants to. Well, I'm very touched by Mrs. Slocum's confidence in me. I, I would have thought she would have put herself up for election. Well, that was my first thought. But you see, I've been making up the manifesto, so you'd better do the chat. And Mr. Humphreys can be a minister without a thingamabob. Thank you, Portfolio. That's the word I was looking for. I'm glad you found it. <laughs> and the rest of you can be in the cabinet. <laughs> we are not a government. We're just a delegation. Don't let's get carried away. I wonder if this... Is more Anthony Eden. <laughs> Mirror, Mr. Humphrey. Mirror, Mr. Spooner. You know, I feel we're doing this for the workers all over this great country of ours. It reminds me of that poem. This sceptre dial, this jewel set in a silver sea, this... This England, that other Eden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, but we're not going until me and Miss Brahms has changed. We're not going looking like just anybody. No. Listen, what if she's not in? Then we'll camp on the doorstep. If we do that, we'll be on the six o'clock news. If my mother sees me camping on the doorstep of number ten, she'll never be able to show her face at bingo again. <laughs> Are you with us or against us? Or one of the don't knows? Actually, I'm a don't know. <laughs> but I'm with you. <laughs> Wait in here, will you? Now, the PM is aware of the reason for your visit and will give you a moment of her time as soon as she's free. Oh, how kind. <laughs> Where's Mr. Humphreys? He was with us at the front door. I ain't seen him since he fell over that golf club. Do you think he's got lost in the corridors of power? He'll get himself arrested. But this whole place is top secret. Oh, fancy us being in number 10 Downing Street. Yes. Just think, Winston probably sat here. Entertaining Lady Astor and all that mob. <laughs> yes, it's certainly got atmosphere. Lloyd George, Baldwin, all of them must have sat here. <laughs> That's what fascinating conversations they Think what great decisions have been taken at this table. I bet Wilson tapped his pipe out on that very ashtray. <laughs> Think of it. Lloyd George keeping secret the fact that his secretary was also his mistress. <laughs> I wonder what words were used when they were alone together in this room. It's not as big as I thought it would be. <laughs> That's because you don't have to dust it. <laughs> She hasn't been round lately, either. Shouldn't we go and look for Mr. Humphreys? He's probably looking everywhere for us. If that's the red one, I'm under the table. No, no, it's this one. Ten to one, it's Mr. Humphreys saying he's under close arrest and would we vouch for him? When I go to my doctor, the phone rings in the waiting room to say that the next patient's required. So probably that means that we can go and see him. I don't think we should touch anything. Yeah, but they know there's a delegation in here. It must be for us. Otherwise, somebody else would have answered it. Oh, Mrs. Slocum, don't... Mrs. Slocum here? <laughs> Slocum? Well, I'm sort of second in the party, as it were. <laughs> Ronald who? <laughs> I don't think I'm quite the person to whom you wish to speak to. But I don't know, no, wait a minute. Hang on, just before you go, while I have your attention, may I say, on behalf of my department and of the rest of Britain, how much we admire you. 
We do. <laughs> I've seen all your films, you know. <laughs> you're ringing because you're worried about and who and drop off. What film was she? <laughs> That's what we were afraid of. I didn't say anything out of place, did I? No. <laughs> Apart from putting the Western Alliance back about 20 years. <laughs> we'll all end up in the Tower of London. <clears throat> Listen, someone's coming. Remember, we tried to stop her, but she overpowered us. Well, I'm sorry that call got misrooted, but whoever answered it certainly put him in a good mood. And I must say, your Mr. Humphreys has charmed the PM. Where is he? Helping her choose a hat for question time in the house. <laughs> Goodbye. And thank you so much. Great pleasure. Thanks for the tea. Mind the feather in the door. <laughs> Apparently she's running late. You spoke to her? Oh, non-stop. About the Japanese takeover? No, about my mother taking in washing. She gave me some very good advice. What was it? Well, apparently it's two buckets of canal water to one a bowl. And don't touch SDP. What's that? Surf dazzling person. <laughs> I'm going to enter this hat for the Guinness Book of Records for the shortest political career. Well, it's not my fault we didn't get in to see her. No, Mr. Humphreys had his chance. He let it slip by. Well, I didn't know she was running late. By the time I'd talked her out of the green shoes with the red handbag and sold her the hat, she was off. <laughs> well, I'm going to go and see Mr. Grace to have one last try. Are you all behind me? We've lost the one chance we might have had. As far as I'm concerned, this is the end. Isn't anybody coming? You won't move, Mr. Grace. He's a mean old man. Apart from that, he's been toppled. Yeah, you go upstairs and try and save your own skin. We've had it down here. Barring a miracle. Well, if we don't meet again, at least nobody can say we didn't try. Goodbye, Stephen. Betty. Shirley. Wilberforce. <laughs> and you, Bert. Good luck. And to you, Harry. He knew all our names. He never used them, but he knew them. <laughs> he was quite human, really. He gave me a little smile at the end. Isn't it funny how disasters bring everybody closer together? This is true. Do you know, I never knew your name was Harry. It ain't. It's Beverly. <laughs> but it's a fault that counts. <laughs> She's as white as a sheep. It's sitting in his chair eating a banana. What is? That bald-headed monkey with the big ears. It climbed through the window and it sat in Mr. Rumbold's chair. I'll go and alert Mr. Wooten. <laughs> I am Mr. Kyoto, assistant to Mr. Yamoto. <laughs> he does not speak English but would like to see workers and manager. We are the workers. Mr. Yamoto said, you should be at your positions. Such idle behavior is not good for discipline. Really? We do not speak to manager. Office here on plan must go that way. I think I should tell you. When Mr. Yamoto wants information, he will tell you. I, uh, I'm afraid I was too late. Mr. Grace said that, uh, subject to Mr. Yamoto's final decision, the deal's going through. But the good news is we're all to be kept on. I very much doubt that. Those two Japs have just gone into your office. And that flaming monkey sitting in your chair. <laughs> <laughs> Judging by the size of the plaster on Mr. Wooten's nose, it's a most ferocious animal. What are we going to do? Apart from sending for the ambulance, it's too late to do anything. Mr. Yamato, will you not be buying Grace Brothers? I I'm terribly sorry, but I think I can explain. No explanation necessary. He will not be insulted by middle management. 
Don't tell me you got the two-fingered salute and the raspberry. That English welcome, we understood. But in our country, getting a banana in the ear is an insult we can't forgive. Good day. British workers, farewell. Twenty-five. This is the latest the staff have arrived in living memory. We all catch him, Peacock. Last night's blizzard was the worst in living memory. I reckon we'll be lucky to see them at all. I'm surprised you're here, Mr. Spooner. I would have thought you would have taken advantage of the inclement weather to take the day off. Oh, not me, sir. I slept in the all-night cinema down the road. I can't afford to miss payday, especially today when we get our rise. Mm, so we've been led to believe. 9.28... I shall have to report this to Mr. Rumbold and see if we can borrow some temporary staff from other departments. Oh, they'll be here, sir. Uh, when they heard the weather forecast yesterday, I heard them making contingency plans. What had they in mind? Well, for a start, they were all going to stay at Mrs. Slocum's house because she lives the nearest. But she lives at the end of a cul-de-sac backing onto a common. They'll never get across the footpath to get to the bus stop. As they're all hard up, I reckon they'll make every effort. <sighs> 9, 29 and 45 seconds. At 9.30, I shall assume they're not going to arrive and act accordingly. Five seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one, not. <laughs> What did you have? A snow plow? I had six Yorkshire Terriers at the end of the year. When they left the backyard door. After we cleared the path with a shuffle. I shouted, mush, mush, and nothing happened. <laughs> but then they spotted my pussy and took off like that. I hung on till the end of the high street, but they slipped their collars and they were off. <laughs> By that time, we're going flat out down the hill. And we went straight through a red traffic light at some roadworks. That was very dangerous. Did anyone see you? No, yeah, it was very useful for overtaking. <laughs> they moved to one side every time I flashed. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Hi ho! Hi ho! <laughs> And the failure of management to meet the promised 10% pay demand is most unfortunate. But I understand the company's difficult position. 
I'm confident that my department will continue to put their shoulders to the wheel with their usual enthusiasm. Um, copies to Mr. Grace, accounts, uh, file, etc. It's ever so cold in here. You should have worn a warmer dress. That's all I have, sir. Well, I'll put the blow heater on under my desk for a moment. Enter! Now, let's see if I can find the right button. Very well under the desk. Uh, you want to stand where I am? <laughs> You've just made a happy man feel very old. <laughs> oh, uh, your morning cup, sir. Ah. Sorry about the dry milk, it's all part of the economy plan. Oh, and there's the hot water. Well, where's the tea? You have to supply your own. <laughs> the governor's cutting costs to the bone. We can't drink hot, dried milk. Well, if you don't tell anyone and you want a tea bag, I do have a supply. Ha <laughs> ha, I knew I could rely on you. Yes. Extra tea, five pence. <laughs> well worth it. Thank you very much indeed. One or two? Oh, two, please. I like it strong. Thank you. One. <laughs> two. Is that it? Well, you're lucky you get the first go. That's going to do the lift girls and half the accounts department. <laughs> Why only half the accounts department? The other half like coffee. <laughs> Have a nice tea. <laughs> While Captain Peacock's off the floor, could you lend me 50 pence till my wages come? I want to send out for a coffee. Oh, I'm sorry, love, but look at that. See, not one coin. I'm flat broke. I've never been flat broke in my life before. Me and all, that rice is coming right at the right time. You can say that again. You know, I always keep a couple of pound notes tucked away in my knickers, just for emergencies. <laughs> Unfortunately, last week, I had an emergency. Oh, what happened? The elastic broke. <laughs> and I dropped one in the haymarket. <laughs> And it blew off down the street. <laughs> Two seconds later, the other one followed it. Alfred, get back behind your counter. Captain Peacock, I normally would obey every command you give me. But <laughs> let's face it, as far as customers are concerned, they could be in the North Pole. I'm just waiting here for my wages so I can send for a coffee to thaw me out. Just feel that. Oh, your tiny hand is frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I said, get back. Now, if you'd spoken like that before... Yes? I'd have gone straight away. <laughs> you want the good news or the bad news first? What do you mean? Well, the good news is here's your pay packets. The bad news is we ain't got no rise. What was that? No rise. And I can tell you now, I've called you a rumpus down in packing. Toiletries are having a sit-in. <laughs> well, I've been held down for over a year. I think we should go and complain to Mr. Grace personally. Well, let me tell you, that man is approachable, because I've just approached him in his office. Look at my attire, I said. Look at the frayed cuffs on the end of my shirt. And did he look? Yeah, I shoved it right under his nose, like that. <laughs> and I said, look, the left sole of my shoe is partly company with the upper. And bang, I shoved it right on his desk. But did he look? Long and hard. And then he took out of his pocket a great thick wad of fibres done up in a elastic band. Removing the elastic band, he put the situation to right there and then. What did you get? The elastic band to keep my soul on. <laughs> well, after that, what chores have we got? After that, nothing. I can't give my mother any less. She's taking him washing as it is. I didn't know that. Neither did I, till I caught her down by the canal with a big boulder and a packet of bowls. <laughs> Well, that settles it. I'm not standing for this, and I am unanimous in that. <laughs> I say that we go to Mr. Rumbold and demand our rise. Mr. Grace must be off his rocker if he thinks he's going to get away with this. Well, for once, I'm on your side. Do you know, I'd get more if I was an old-age pensioner. Well, you haven't got long to wait. <laughs> now, I've got my dander up, so just watch it. <laughs> no, no, no. I suggest that you hang on, grit your teeth, and tighten your belts. Uh, just rushing in and demanding your rise will achieve nothing. I'm glad to hear you say that, Captain Peacock. Because <coughs> you ain't got one either. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm middle management. 
My rise has been agreed at the table in the boardroom. And according to Mr. Patel of accounts, middle management are going to be asked to take a cut. What? But this is monstrous, you sure? Mr. Patel was middle management till he heard the news. The last time I saw him, he was going upstairs to hand in his notice and catching his curry vouchers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that settles it. We must be united in this. All for one and one for all. Right, so who's going in first? Well, I suggest we all go in together. Well, the doorway isn't big enough. Well, we could all bunch up tightly behind Captain Peacock. <laughs> no, uh, we could go in side by side. Except Mrs. Slocum. I shall be pleased to lead the way, and that daft boy can bring up the rear. Mr. Grace is off his rocker if he thinks he's going to diddle us. Yeah, but what are you going to say? I shall be succinct and to the point. <laughs> it's all very well. But what are you going to say? Give us the money, joggy, as or else. <laughs> Mr. Wooden, the pet department. Uh, yes, Mr. Wooden. What? You've lost a monkey. <laughs> Good Lord. Bid you where? <laughs> that must have been painful. Uh, make a note of this. What sort of monkey? Paraguayan, what do they look like? Uh, long arms, bald head, and big 